probably know that the power end of the mud pump is a system of gears, shafts, and bearings that convert the rotary motion of a motor or engine into the back and forth pumping motion of the pistons in the fluid end of the pump. You should also know that the parts of the power end are precision made. They cost a lot of money and require some attention. If you'll take a little time to perform the right preventive maintenance on your pump, you can save your drilling rig from possible downtime. You can save Sedco a lot of money, and you can save yourself a lot of unnecessary maintenance and repair time later. Your mud pump is vital to your drilling operation. Are you taking good care of her? Your most important power in concern is lubrication. Do all you can to keep the correct lubricant in the crankcase. Keep it clean and free of contaminants like mud, and make sure that the oil can get to the parts needing lubrication. Your pump's lubrication system should follow one of two patterns. Many of Sedco's mud pumps are lubricated by an external oil pump. This pump is attached to the side of the main pump and circulates gear lubricant through a heat exchanger, where it's cooled or heated by some liquid, water in most cases. From the heat exchanger, the lubricant flows through a magnetic oil filter and a cartridge type filter, and then is carried into the power end of the pump. Here the lubricant is piped to the lower crosshead guides and to a distributing trough which supplies oil to the upper crosshead guides and crosshead pins, the pinion shaft bearings, the main crankshaft bearings, and the connecting rod bearings. Some pumps have no external oil pump or filter systems. These pumps rely on the main gear to carry lubricant up to a system of troughs which supply oil to the bearings and crossheads. There are a few procedures you should follow every day to keep your pump in good condition. Check the oil level in the crankcase. Drain the sludge from the mud trap. And check the oil pressure and temperature. These don't take long and they're easy to do. The pump needs to be stopped for five minutes before you check the oil level. While you're waiting, drain the mud trap. The mud trap collects foreign material, water or mud for example, which might condense inside the pump or leak through damaged rod wipers. If this trap isn't drained daily, these contaminants can build up and flow over the trap into the crankcase, where they'll cause serious damage to the gears and bearings. It's a lot easier to open a drain cock now than it'll be to replace the parts of your power end later. As soon as oil alone is draining from the trap, you can close it back up. Now's a good time to check the extension rod clamps. Make sure they're tight. Loose clamps can cause damage to fluid end parts. And look at the flushing sump strainer in the cradle to be sure that it hasn't scaled over or clogged up. If your pump's diaphragm housing, which holds the rod wiper rings, is equipped with grease fittings, you need to grease it every day. Always keep an eye on the oil pipes for leaks. Okay, your oil level checks out, so start the pump back up. While the pump is operating, look at the oil pressure gauges at the filters. If the pressure at the inlet to the filters has increased to 15 pounds per square inch above the pressure at the filter outlet, this indicates the oil isn't flowing well through the filter. Most likely the filter element's dirty, so change it. You can change the element in this cartridge type filter while the pump is operating if you need to. There are valves provided to let you bypass the oil filters while you're working on them. Remember to route the lubricant back through the filters once you're finished. Take a look at the element when you remove it. It can tell you what type of contaminants you may have in the oil, and it can also indicate whether the lubricant needs to be changed at this time. Be sure you clean the case of the filter before putting the new element in. You should plan to change the filter element every two or three weeks if your pump is operating continuously, but change it sooner if the pressure at the filter indicates the need. Also clean the magnetic filter. Both filters are right next to each other and both are bypassed. Clean the case and the magnet as well as the hardware inside the case.
Hey, you left the filters bypassed. Don't forget to put your new and clean filters to use. If your pump has an oil temperature gauge, check it daily to ensure that the oil is within the accepted range, between 70 and 160 degrees Fahrenheit. If the temperature is above or below these limits, make sure you aren't bypassing the heat exchanger. If that's not the problem, you may need to heat or cool the liquid feeding the exchanger. If you let the lubricant get too hot, it'll get too thin and soon break down. If it gets too cold, it won't flow to the parts that need it. What about changing the oil? Most pump manufacturers recommend you change the oil at least every six months. This is the absolute longest your mud pump should go without an oil change. In most cases, the oil is changed more often. Anytime you find contaminants in the oil, it should be changed. Be sure you follow the guidelines sent from the Dallas office concerning the recommended interval between routine oil changes. In some areas, six months may always be too long. Briefly, here's the procedure for changing the oil. Shut the pump down, drain the oil from the crankcase by removing this drain plug, drain the mud trap and the cradle, replace the rod wipers. Conditions in your area may call for you to flush out the pump with diesel fuel or a similar non-toxic, non-explosive solvent. Now, this is a tricky procedure, so do it only if the pump's lubricant has been contaminated or if you've been instructed to do so by the senior engineer for your area. Remember, you should flush the pump any time you find contaminated oil in the crankcase. When you do this, change the cartridge filter element and clean the magnetic filter before and after flushing. It's recommended that you follow the diesel with lightweight motor oil during flushing to eliminate the diesel, which has no lubricating value and will dilute the lubricant. Follow the instructions of your senior engineer concerning this procedure. After you've flushed and drained the crankcase, Hose out the mud trap and crankcase with high pressure diesel. Clean inside the pump with a rag and some solvent. Mop up all the diesel. Clean and change filters. And refill the crankcase with a proper lubricant. If your pump is not equipped with an external oil pump, take special care to pour some lubricant into the distributing troughs at the top of the power end near the pinion shaft. For a pump which does have an external lube system, you should still fill the crankcase cover oil trough. Start the oil pump before the main pump. Make sure the oil temperature is okay. After running the main pump a few minutes, shut it down and check the oil level and add or drain as necessary. Now let's watch how it's done. Always be sure the pump is turned off and can't be accidentally started. Drain the oil from the crankcase. While you're waiting, drain the mud trap. This time, drain it completely dry. This is a good time to pull the side inspection plates and check crosshead clearance with a feeler gauge. See your pump's service manual for the amount of clearance allowable. If your clearance is too great, you need an experienced mechanic to make the necessary repairs. In an oil well pump, the button on the end of the pony rod is small enough to allow you to slide the diaphragm housing off for replacement of diaphragms, commonly called rod wipers. Simply remove the extension rod clamp, rotate the jack shaft until the pony rod is several inches from the piston rod extension, and remove the extension. Don't use pipe wrenches on the rods unless you want to come back and change them next week. Now you can remove the cap screws from the diaphragm housing and slide it off the pony rod. You should have three wiper rings and two metal lantern rings as well as the diaphragm housing and diaphragm cover. Save the lantern rings unless they're broken. If the old lantern rings have some nicks or burrs, you'll want to clean them up. You'll also need to clean the pony rod. When replacing the rings, it's very important that you point the sealing inner lip of each ring in the right direction. The side with the groove is the side with the lip. The first ring's lip should face the power end of the pump to keep the oil and the crankcase and out of the cradle. The next two rings should have their lips toward the fluid end to keep mud and water out of the gear end of the pump. Oil the lantern rings and wiper rings before installing. Place a wiper ring, lantern ring, and then another wiper ring in the diaphragm housing. 
the lips of the two wipers should face away from each other toward the outside of the housing. If you have to force a ring in, don't use a sharp or metal tool. Use a block of wood so you don't damage the ring. Now oil the pony rod and slide the diaphragm housing on. Drive the third wiper ring into the diaphragm cover, then the lantern ring. One drain hole in the housing should be at the bottom. Install the diaphragm cover matching the dowels in the housing with the holes in the cover. Install the cap screws and then replace the extension rod and clamp. Be sure the button on the end of the pony rod is clean so you can get this joint made up tightly. If you don't, you'll have to shut the pump down tomorrow to replace a worn piston rubber, and maybe a few other parts. Some pumps have a large button on the pony rod that will tear up your rod wipers if you try to slide the diaphragm assembly over it. In this case, you'll have to loosen the pony rod from the crosshead, loosen the diaphragm assembly, and slide the pony rod out of the assembly. This assembly has four wiper rings. Point two lips toward the fluid end and two toward the power end. Remember to follow the recommendations of the senior engineer for your area concerning flushing the system with diesel fuel. Wherever you are, if you're changing contaminated oil, contaminated with water, mud, sand, metal particles, or any other foreign material, try to find the source of the contamination, correct it, and flush the lubrication system with a solvent. This procedure can only be done on a pump with an external oil pump because the solvent has to be circulated without running the main pump. If your pump isn't equipped with an oil pump, all you can do is spray the troughs with high pressure diesel and wipe them clean and dry, or rotate the pump a few revolutions with a lightweight, non-detergent motor oil in the crankcase. Be sure you don't have a load on the pump if you do this. To flush a pump, add about half as much solvent as you would lubricant to the crankcase. Now clean the magnetic oil filter and remove the dirty element from the cartridge type filter. Start the oil pump not the main pump. If you try to run the mud pump with diesel in it, you'll destroy the bearings in a matter of seconds. All you want to do is run the lubrication pump to circulate some diesel through the system and clean it out. If your oil pump is normally mechanically driven from the jack shaft of the mud pump, you can use an electric or pneumatic drill to power the oil pump for these few minutes. Let the diesel circulate for 10 minutes. While you're waiting, Hose out the mud trap with high pressure diesel. Okay, drain the crankcase. Use a diesel spray to loosen any sludge buildup in the bottom of the pump. Pay special attention to troughs and ledges. Now get a bucket of diesel and some rags and clean the pump. Be sure to clean the oil pump suction strainer in the bottom of the crankcase. Take some time here to make sure the pump is very clean. Would you eat breakfast out of it? Mop all the diesel dry. Diesel fuel is a contaminant you don't want in the lubricant. Don't leave anything inside the pump. Rags left in the crankcase can and do clog the lubrication system. Let the solvent evaporate while you check the bolting on the pump. Make sure everything's tight. Clean the magnetic filter once more and install a new element in the cartridge type filter. Don't forget to clean the filter case. If you're simply changing the oil and not flushing your pump, you should still clean up any sludge in the crankcase and check bolts for tightness. Cleaning and changing filters is also important. Close the mud trap and crankcase drain and fill the crankcase with a proper lubricant, normally AGMA number five or seven extreme pressure heavy duty gear lubricant. There's a plate on the side of the pump which tells you how much lubricant and what type is recommended for your pump. These plates may be outdated though, so always follow the instructions of the senior engineer for your area. Once you have oil in the crankcase, the smartest thing you can do is turn on the oil pump and observe the gear in for oil circulation. 
you should find oil entering every lower and upper crosshead guide and coming out nipples above the eccentric bearings as well as some oil dripping from the bearings. This is the best way to locate broken or clogged oil lines and now is the time to do it. If the pump doesn't rely on an external lubrication pump, be sure to fill all the troughs and reservoirs with lubricant so the moving parts will be lubricated the instant you start the mud pump. This pump has an oil pump, but there's a trough just inside this top inspection plate that should be filled with oil anyway. Start the oil pump five minutes before you turn on the main pump. Don't forget to clean the breather cap. Make sure the oil temperature is in the proper range before you start the mud pump. Remember, the oil should be at between 70 and 160 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay? Then start the charging pump and your mud pump and circulate mud to the pits for several minutes. Be sure to watch the pressure gauges to make sure that oil is circulating. Now stop the pump and let the oil settle for a few minutes. Now is a great time to recheck the extension rod clamps for tightness. Then check the oil level and add or drain some oil if you find it necessary. You've taken pretty good care of that pump. Now she's back in business and she'll serve you well. Can you do it again? Changing the oil. Do it at least every six months. Do it any time the oil is contaminated. How do you do it? Drain the crankcase. Drain the mud trap. Replace the rod wipers. Change the filter element. Clean the magnetic filter. Flush with diesel if necessary. Make sure the pump is clean. Add new lubricant. Every day, check the oil level. Drain sludge from the mud trap and check the oil pressure and temperature. Change the filter element every few weeks, sooner if the pressure builds up on the filter inlet. If you're not familiar with all these procedures, rewind the tape and watch it again. Goodbye, good luck, and good pumping.